In today's video, I speak with Peter Rollinson about the upcoming Lucid Gravity. That's their all-electric SUV that's planned to come out late next year. And I speak with him about the Gravity while sitting inside a Lucid Gravity. Now, Peter's not only the CEO of Lucid, he's also the CTO, the Chief Technology Officer. So he knows as much about this vehicle as anybody in the company. So stick around if you want to hear Peter's thoughts on the upcoming Gravity and what makes it so special. Sitting here with Peter Rawlinson. This isn't the first time we've chatted, but it's the first time in a while, Peter. Nice. Um, you know, when, when the air launched, there was a few occasions where we had the opportunity to get together. But uh, now I'm sitting in something completely different, although it's very familiar. Yeah. Uh, but it is a completely different vehicle. You could, yeah. you could, you could tell this is a Lucid. You don't without the Lucid branding on the steering could, wheel. Yeah. I would know what I was sitting in. Yeah. Um, but um, tell us a little bit about your latest baby here. Well, I think th thanks, Tom. Great to be with you again, and uh, welcome to. We're here in the meatpacking uh, district of um, Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, and we're actually got the cars here in the um, in the classic car club where we're going to hold a sort of launch event this evening mm -hmm. and great to have you here uh, so i think it was really important that we created uh, a, a car which is another landmark using all our technology everything we've learned from air and then more i think it's only now we're able to make a truly great suv it's hugely challenging to make uh, a product like this that's really groundbreaking um, and also wanted to differentiate it sufficiently from air to such a degree we thought long and hard about using carryover air platform. Uh, we felt that was uh, an acceptable compromise. So we've embodied all our learning from the air platform, a very similar technologies. It's uh, all aluminum, stampings, castings, extrusions. It's all riveted and bonded like an aircraft. Very similar technology, all that learning, but it's a new platform to make this true SUV and to give us proper product differentiation. So that was the, the really big decision. And then it was about uh, you know, optimizing range without just overloading the vehicles with too many batteries, because everyone's doing that. So again, it comes down to efficiency. Why is that important? It's vital that we create EVs with longer range, using less batteries, using less of the world's precious resources. So again, we have ultra high voltage, 924 volts. Actually, this has got the same number of cells, 6600, as you see on a on an Air Grand Touring, mm -hmm. or even the Sapphire. So it's 120 kilowatt hour? Around oh, there, yeah. yes. And it may be a little bit more than the 112 because we're gonna have slightly more advanced cell chemistry. Mm -hmm. So we keep the same number of cells, we will get a few more kilowatt hours by virtue of cell chemistry advances. It's not actually a bigger pack, but it would have a slightly more capacity yeah. to be the same weight and size. This video is powered by QMerit, North America's leading provider of installation services for electric vehicle charging, home energy storage, and other electrification technologies. See how QMerit is making the energy transition easy for home and business owners by following the link in the description of this video. One thing we did was it's not exactly the same size pack because with the space concept, our pack is sculpted around the occupants. Mm -hmm. So you'd have a different occupant package in the, the SUV, gravity to the air. With the air, we double stack our modules underneath the mm -hmm. second row seat, but we wanted an absolute flat floor with gravity. So we move that double stack forward under you and me under this first row of seats because that space you don't use and actually if you just put your fingers down between your legs you can feel, you can that feel the yes and absolutely that's the extra stack. Yeah. So you don't get that the, foot well in the back seat that you do with the air. Um, no, well well no that's different. That's the you can get there's still the double stack mm -hmm. in the air with or without the foot well. Mm -hmm. That applies to twenty two modular eighty. Right. So we've got a super we won't have that. That's uh, what I mean. You, you don't, don't have, have that with you this vehicle. You won't have it in any yeah. vehicle. And so it's flat floor through, so we have all first, second and third row occupants on the same level mm -hmm. of, of the battery pack through. That was really important. But 
95% of the battery pack is the same. The modules, most of the architecture, the voltage, the fundamental layout is the same. We just have a different top cover. And it has a transform, that just that little bit of investment has a transformative effect upon the vehicle. So it's this mindset, it doesn't have to be the same platform, the same pack carryover, very similar but highly differentiated. And so then we move to the other big feature, the big difference here is this clear view cockpit. Yeah, 34 um, inches. 34 inch. It looks taller than the Airs, is it? It is or a is little it, bit taller. It is, because yeah, it, is it looks like it's about the same length. It's, it's about the same length, but, yeah. and it is a tiny bit, you're mm -hmm. very observant there, Tom. And we've got this squirkle steering wheel, yeah. square round steering wheel, and the idea was we didn't like yoke, we felt that was, actually, I don't mind yoke when I'm cruising on the freeway, it's around town when I'm using it a lot, or if anything emergency happens, or I have to turn or do anything, then I, I lose reference point with the discontinuity of the wheel. And I, 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 that was, I, we felt as a yoke was completely unacceptable for that reason. But then we tried, I don't know, Derek says 25 different versions. It was a lot yeah. of this wheel to get it right. It was either too square, it was too round, wasn't flat enough at the top, and we didn't have the hand grips in the right place. So in this crazy situation where we're making all these steering wheels, and the easiest way to do it was making billet machine a, 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 from, from a Aluminum. Mm -hmm. So we get a very accurate representation. The trouble is thermal conductivity. So I'm going down the I-5 on, on a November evening, my hands are nearly freezing <laughs> off, and I'm trying all these different steering wheels. Anyway, the things I do for Lucid. So we've 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 sort of uh, convened on this one. I'm very happy it's with better it. better vision. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, a yeah, Full yeah. view. You've of got the full on right, in, yeah. uninterrupted, right. uh, and and then of course we've got landscape here mm -hmm. for centre display and brought it up because some people were complaining that it was a bit low on yeah. uh, the bottom. Of, I prefer of this landscape it is better, view. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you yeah. know, the, not, not that they, there's anything wrong with the airs, but and this doesn't retract like the no, airs. No, no, which is a neat feature, but there's a lot of engineering and cost built into mm -hmm. that. So it was a fun thing to have, but man, because it, it didn't retract in a wonky way a few times is easy. Yeah. Making it a robust solution, which would last the lifetime of a car, it had to very <laughs> thorough engineering. So it's hard to build a car, an advanced high-tech <laughs> car, is what you're saying, Peter? It's, I find it's tricky. <laughs> Well, you're seeming, you're making it look, I won't say easy, but oh, you're doing a good job at it you. so far. Um, and thanks. what amazes me yeah. is the airs of air and now the gravity's efficiency. Yeah. Now you said, you yeah. know, the size of the battery packs a little more than 100 kilowatt hours, so, yeah, somewhere could be in that closer range. closer to 120. Yeah, yeah, so somewhere somewhere in, in around 120. Yeah. Yet this is going to have an EPA rated range you're estimating of more than 440 miles. More over 440. To, to compare, I own a Rivian R1S and the battery packs about 135 kilowatt hour, yes, I believe. Be this one. And um, the EPA rated range is like 316 or 320 somewhere yeah, around there yeah so you you have a smaller battery and you're expecting to deliver more than a hundred miles extra extra epa yes. rated range yes, yes. on a similarly sized vehicle yeah you know yeah. Th three row uh, seat absolutely. suv absolutely. um and that really speaks to how lucid's been laser focused on being as efficient as they can with powertrain totally, and, totally. and everything so so this is where there's this complete misunderstanding about us as a company, why we exist, why I'm here, what drives me. I mean, there's this misunderstanding that somehow we're this niche, playing, super expensive company that just panders to the, to the wealthy. The vision of the company is to really drive down the cost of electric cars because it's very important for the planet. We just have to start with high-end products because the economics are such, you just can't do it any other way. It's very important we develop the most advanced technology in the world because by doing that we can go further with less batteries. And why is that important? Because the battery is the most expensive part of the car and if we can make them have a meaningful impact upon the size of the battery, it will drive down the cost of future cars that we're going to do, which are going to be much more affordable when a mid-sized platform comes mid-decade and I'd like to do others more affordable. So this is very important for the planet. We have to start with a high-end product. It's the only way we can do this. That's why we're going ultra high voltage. That's why we've got this incredible motor technology, drivetrain technology, 
we've got the the batteries derived from our experience with Formula E racing. Mm -hmm. um, it's true that most vehicles in this class are, are getting about maybe 2.1, 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour, something like that. Tom, you're an expert on this. You're right. Correct me if I'm yeah. if you disagree. Yeah, McCray, McCray, you know Mercedes EQS well as I SUV, do. Rivian r one s You're looking right around it's there. It's in that zone, yep. isn't it? And so we're getting over 3.6. I think about 3.65 with this. Yeah. I'd like it to be more. Now, part of that is aerodynamics. We've got a drag coefficient uh, at prototype stage of 0.24. We're hoping to get it beneath 0.24. Um, we've also got, because of the space concept, a, it's slightly smaller frontal area. And remember, it's, everyone quotes CD, it's CDA. Yeah. So it's shape times size. Yes. CD is the shape. A area is the yeah. size. So you can have something the right size, a shape, but if it's a big size, of course, it's got a lot more drag. So it's important to get the space concept. So that's where our, the miniaturization of our powertrain means that you can sit in a more comfy position because there's more leg room. If there's more room for your legs, you can sit a little bit more reclined. You can bring the roof line down and we get the A right. And that actually helps back with the CD. We've got this curved underbody with the battery pack. So the whole thing is a wing car. So, and we've got a nice diffuser at the back. So we've got 0.24 uh, as, a, as a CD, but the real secret sauce is in our motor drive units with the, the technology we've redefined, redesigned the electric motor, and we've got a next generation again coming for this. Otherwise, we wouldn't have got the 440 plus, and that will fit its way back into air. Next generation and motors, motor, motor oh, okay. technology okay. in the motor. It's not a complete rework, right. but it's but not going to be the same motor you use in the air. It's going to be a close derivative. There's a new feature that we're putting in which significantly improves efficiency again we've already got the most efficient motors that i know of and the smallest uh, and smallest and it's going to take it the next level and this is very important to save the planet and that's what we're all about and people who buy these cars they they they, they help because they're they're enabling us to continue as a business to make more affordable cars in the future and that's what midsize is all about so i'm delighted that we can get over 3.6 when miles per kilowatt hour when others are getting in the low twos this is what it's all about and you know you spoke about um people are saying that you know it's a tool a toy for the rich folks i think people that are in the industry understand that the only way to start a new car company is start at the top uh, with totally, higher end vehicles totally, totally. Uh, you know you, i i think you're focusing too much on the internet trolls that uh <laughs> that are gonna rip you no matter what um People that are in the industry know this is the only way to do it. You yeah. start at the top and then work your way down. Hopefully, next generation vehicle that you guys bring out, as you said, you know, mid to late this decade would might be um, uh, something that's a little more of the average yes. working yeah. man yeah. can afford. Totally, Although the, totally. the starting price on this at eighty thousand, it's under eighty. It, it's, it's, it's from yeah, yeah, it's uh, from yeah. The underage. starting price at under eighty is is not you know stratosphere. I mean, the, we wanted to it's, catch. it's in line with the other vehicles. That's right. We wanted to catch the 7,500 Federal yeah. for an SUV. I thought that was really important. Um, yeah, yeah, I, Which would qualify for the full 7,500? Well, I th I, I'm not sure. It, yeah. I think it also depends upon personal income, doesn't it? So well, yeah, I mean, a few factors. but would, would you, would, uh, the other end of it, like the mineral sourcing and so forth, would that be? Uh, would, so so um, I'm not sure about that. What we can uh, leverage is from the, 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 uh, the government, and this is for the company, mm -hmm. that we can, we, uh, we take advantage of the IRA scheme because we make our own battery modules and packs right. in the USA. Mm -hmm. And remember this car is a USA made car. And this is why I'm so proud that the you know the Arizona team uh, are, they're eager to get their hands on this to start manufacturing this <laughs> in a year's time. We built out the factory you must come and see. We put a new three three million new square feet in. Oh wow! We put the line. The line is in, and there's just air on the line. But the line is ready, and it's running, ready for gravity. So this isn't just this vehicle getting ready. The factory's getting ready. And I was inspecting the week before last uh, our stamping plant, uh, which we're we're doing vertically integrated stampings in house. We're going to bring those in for gravity. And this is going to reduce the the cost to manufacture, mm -hmm. and uh, you know be another step 
step forward for us as a company. And this is another thing that's so misunderstood. People think we're losing this crazy amount of money per car, read crazy numbers. And it's so misleading because what we're doing is our finances are dominated by the investment we're putting in for the future. For our factory, we've got a factory in Saudi Arabia. We've got the big expansion in Arizona for gravity. We're spending a fortune on the tooling now for gravity to make this fantastic machine here in America. All that is on our books. That isn't a loss per car, that is the investment for the company's yeah. future. Uh, but that's that's how it always gets treated. And, and, and again, as I said before, people that understand the industry know that that, that is always going to be the case. Look at how long Tesla lost money. Look at how long even companies like Amazon yeah. you know, lost money. You know, it, it, it's, it's gonna, it, it takes inside a, a decade to really totally. get on your feet and start running. So, totally, so I, I totally. think peop, people in this, in, in this industry totally. understand we're that. In that. We're in that phase now of expansion yeah. where we have to effectively lose some money to it. It's not a loss of money, it's investment. It's investment. In, it's investment in the future. No. And I think there's a recognition that this is um, this is what the American market wants. I think that we've seen that there is uh, it's kind of a disappointing demand for um, luxury sedans right across the, pe the piece. It's a bit gasoline or it's all combustion right now. But I think that, you know, this is what America yearns for, a true state-of-the-art electric SUV made in America with extraordinary range and range through responsibility. And remember, the other thing is that it's not just about battery size getting this 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. You're using less energy, you, it's costing you less. It's, it's like getting better gas mileage. We forget that. Yeah. Because electricity typically is less expensive than less gas. Less expensive. Uh, but, but that, it adds up over time. So totally, uh, totally. absolutely, if, if, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour in a, in a seven seat SUV. Yes. When you compare it to some of the competition you said is around uh, two miles per kilowatt hour, yeah. maybe slightly yeah. more yeah. And, and take it to the extreme and look at the Hummer uh, SUV, you know, where, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's what you've done here with this size vehicle, um, uh, it, to me, is extraordinary that you could Thank squeeze you. out 440 miles with, uh, with, with, with that size battery pack. And there's no one thing. People often look for a single solution. And, um, you know, the, the, the direction I give all the engineering team is it's, uh, it's, it's like 1,001 tiny improvements and each engineer's got to work their guts out to achieve it. And you've got to instill this philosophy in them yeah, yours little contribution makes a tiny difference, but there's a thousand of those contributions, yeah. and collectively it makes a monumental change. It's a sea change. Yeah. And uh, also, you can see in the back here, we've got room for a surfboard. Mm -hmm. I think we've got uh, room for an eight-foot board, even diagonally, yeah. and, and, bicycles. and the bicycles. Um, a lot of the package here, although it was enabled by our miniaturization of our powertrain, the puzzle here, the intriguing 3D puzzle, was solving the seats, mm -hmm. how they fold. Yeah. And so the third row folds back and goes into the, the, the trough for the trunk, mm -hmm. and that really determined the rear overhang of the vehicle. We worked so hand in glove between engineering and the design studio. And then the second row, um, we, we thought of it doing a flip-flop, but then you put this extra element behind the, the front seats and you re reduced your, your bed length. Mm -hmm. So what the secret was to do a slide and fold mm -hmm. uh, for the second row, and that's what we've got. And that enables this perfectly flat loading area, and it's a particularly low one, because I'm a practical guy in my other world when I'm not doing a car company I've got a like plant farming in England and I'm used to lugging big things about and I know the value of having a relatively low loading area you yeah. can lift something up and just slide in you can't bring it up chest height to push it in if you've got a big weight it's very low in the back yeah it's really it's just straight through and the front also you have the low loading front yes. end because the the grill lifts with the hood that's what we wanted yeah. it was really important you didn't have to put it Mm -hmm. over and yeah. in. Yeah. And that's why we need to have the cargo net system mm -hmm. linked to the, 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 the front seat mm -hmm. because I, I, I was worried about people's wine bottles rolling out as soon as they <laughs> they, they lifted the they lifted the, 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 the hood when they parked yeah. down facing downhill. <laughs> I had this vision. Okay. 
Well, listen, um, uh, I know you're a busy man yeah. and you've got uh, people to entertain. There's some people looking at us from outside of the car as, yeah, as we speak. Um, uh, and uh, I really appreciate the time, Peter. Let me, let me it was great again, talking with yeah, you and yeah, uh, good luck with gravity. Thanks so much, man. Looking forward Thanks. to driving Thanks. one once I get oh, closer to um, yeah, we'll uh, get launching. Thank yeah, you, next, Peter. Next summer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank Peter again for taking the time to sit down with me inside of the Gravity uh, for nearly 20 minutes. Uh, there were a lot of people there that wanted to speak with him, and uh, he took the time to talk to me, so I really appreciate that. And we learned a little bit about the vehicle. We learned about the motor, that it's actually more efficient than the motors that they use in the air. Now, it's not a completely redesigned motor, but they made some tweaks to it and made it m even more efficient than the air's motor. Uh, we learned about uh, why the vehicle doesn't have a yoke. Peter talked a little bit about, uh, you know, how he didn't mind on the highway cruising along with the yoke, but when you've got to make turns and so forth, he just didn't think it was the right fit for him, and it's why he has what he calls a squirkle steering wheel, which is pretty interesting. I can't wait to drive it and see how I like that. I know I don't really like the yoke, um, and I've driven them quite a bit now. I just, I don't get it. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a better uh, thing than a, than a round wheel. Um, I think I got used to it and it would be okay, but it wasn't an improvement. It was kind of like a, a solution to something that wasn't a problem. Um, we learned about uh, the mid-size platform that Lucid's going to be bringing out sort of in the middle of this decade. And Peter's very, sounds very enthusiastic about that uh, because it's going to bring down the price of the vehicles. It's going to be a much lower price point than uh, the air and the gravity comes out now. And you could tell that it bothers him that some people uh, look at Lucid and say it's a niche automaker that panders to the rich. Uh, I, you could tell that that's not something that he wants the company be viewed as. Um, but, you know, with all these startups, they always start at the top. The expensive vehicles, you get profitable, and that allows you to be able to bring the lower cost vehicles to market. That's the blueprint that you almost have to follow when you're starting a car manufacturing company. So it's not surprising to me that they came out with this expensive vehicles first. The air was even more expensive. The gravity cost less than what the air did when it first came out. And, um, the Rarity is not a cheap vehicle. As we mentioned in the video, it is going to come start with a starting price of under 80000 so it will qualify for the federal tax credit. But if you get some options in it, I'm sure it's going to be upwards of $100,000. It's still very expensive. But it's not uh, priced out of the market for those type of vehicles. Look at you know Mercedes EQS SUV, Rivian R1S, its main competitors, and uh, you know that they're in right in that uh uh, price range also. Now, the Kia EV9 is going to be priced a little bit less. I think that um, I haven't had a chance to drive that yet, but that looks like it's going to be a good alternative for people looking for a seven seater and don't have the eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollar coin. That's going to be maybe uh, somewhere in the sixty thousand dollar range. So uh, that'll be something to look for if you need a seven seat all electric uh, vehicle uh, SUV and you you can't. Uh, Go for the uh, Rivian uh, Mercedes or Lucid dollars. Uh, take a look at the EV9. Okay, well, that's it for the video here today. I'm going to have a follow-up video about the Gravity because I was able to speak with a few other Lucid representatives and shoot some more video, do some walk-arounds, get maybe a, a better look at the, at the uh, video. Honestly, when I came to this event, that's what I came to do. It wasn't to speak to Peter, but when he showed up and he said, Hey, Tom, you want to sit in the car? We'll talk Gravity. I was like... How do I say no to that? So uh, I appreciate uh, him taking the time to do that for me and uh, look for the, my follow-up Gravity video in a week or two. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, give me a like on this video if you liked it, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.